Hi again, friends. Let's start going through lean principles. And as I'm doing this, I suggest that you have that PDF file with the assessment and perhaps do this as a team. And as I'm going through each principle, do the evaluation in your, in, in your assessment and fill in, you know, what's the so what? What in the future should we, could we be doing to improve our, our processes and our, our organization? So the first principle, and if you, you had to just pick one principle to describe lean, it is continuous improvement. And it is the idea that you don't have to have big wins, you know, you don't have to have home runs, but a lot of singles equal winning the game. So think about the process of continuous improvement. And that begins at the Gemba, as they say, where the work gets done on the spot with a small team of people, that family farm, if you will, small craft shop idea, taking responsibility for their process. So let me just ask you, if you think about the flow of the work through your organization, could you map it, and I suggest you do this, and say, okay, you know, these 10 steps belong to this team, and these 10 steps belong to that team. What parts of the process are owned by what teams? And do those teams know <laughs> that they are responsible for measuring, evaluating, and improving that process? If that's true, that's a major element of continuous improvement. Just like with managers, you have to assign responsibility. People have to know their responsibility. They have to measure their performance, and they have to be empowered to make changes. They have to be empowered to experiment. Are your teams trained in improvement methods? Do they know what the PDSA or PDCA cycle is? Do they know how to do quick problem solving? Do they have a team huddle in the morning? A, a quick team meeting where they say, what happened yesterday? Let's look at the date on the board. What can we do to improve today? What did we learn yesterday? What experiments would make sense today to solve some problem or improve some performance? Who's going to do what to whom when? Let's quickly action plan it. OK, let's go to work. Let's try it. At the end of the day or the next morning, they say, what happened? Did it work? Did it not work? And what's the so what of that? Do we continue doing it, or do we conduct another experiment? Do we call for help? You know, what, do we, what do we do? That process, it's, and it's really simple, but, but knowing a problem-solving methodology, knowing their data, every team's got to have their data, and having that, what many plants call a huddle board, where they have their huddle, but a data board, um, where they can talk about improvement, that's critical to the continuous improvement process. And do our managers, you know, this isn't one of the, the questions, but, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Do your managers encourage? Do they understand continuous improvement? Do they encourage continuous improvement? Continuous improvement is not something that just happens on the shop floor at the bottom level. It has to happen at the plant manager's team. It has to happen at the sales and marketing manager's team. It has to happen with the human resource vice president and her team. It has to happen at every level in the organization because cultural characteristics are vertically integrated. The, the cultural behavior at the top seeps down. People model the behavior of those above. So don't consider this just something that you're going to do on the shop floor because it won't last, it won't work. You've got to do it from top to bottom. So ask yourself, are our management teams practicing all those things with the data, with the problem-solving methods, with experimentation, et cetera. Also, there is the idea of individual suggestions. That is part of the Toyota production system or lean management. Is there a process whereby we encourage, collect, and respond to suggestions made by employees doing the work? Remember, they are the world's greatest experts. If you don't listen to them and you don't respect them, Respect for people, other key principle. If that's not the case, then you're going to squelch the continuous improvement process. So I hope that makes sense. The scientific method. Folks, this is so simple, but so profound. Most of human progress over the last 1,000 years 
solving health problems, eliminating polio, improving the houses we live in, the cars we drive, almost everything that has improved over the last thousand years has improved because of the application of the scientific method. And the scientific method, you don't have to be a rocket science or a brain surgeon to practice the scientific method. It means knowing your data, first of all. Graph it, see it, visualize it. So you can see the trend. Is it going up or going down? And is it varying a lot or is it just varying a little? What is it telling us? The data speaks. Listen to the data and you listen to it by watching it. Okay. So you must visualize the data. Now, the scientific method is based on knowing the baseline data, right? What it has been, then experimenting, knowing that, you know, on this date, on this shift, on this hour, we changed something. And then watching what happens to the data and saying, hey, it went up, or hey, it went down, or oops, nothing happened. All of which is okay, because all of it teaches us. We all learn from watching that. That is the scientific method, folks. It is not complicated. But you would be amazed how many senior managers don't know and practice the scientific method. They don't look at the data other than financial data. They don't experiment. They don't look at what happens. Now look, hourly employees can do this. Trust me, this is what happens with every work team at Toyota or Honda or the, the nurses on the maternity ward, you know, they look at their data and they conduct experiments, intelligent experiments, not, not crazy experiments, but that is the process of the scientific method. Do your teams, do your employees know the PDCA cycle, which is a problem solving method that is a scientific problem solving method, or the A3, which is a more rigorous problem solving process? And do they apply that method? And do your managers? Visual display, that's part of the scientific method because we can watch what happens to the data. Respect for people, no more important principle. When you see the house of Toyota, you'll see the, the, the house and you'll see two big pillars. And the two big pillars are continuous improvement and respect for people. Those are the two most important principles. And, you know, respect for people sounds like a slogan. It just sounds too easy and too gushy, right? Yeah, yeah, we respect people. People are our most important product, blah, blah, blah. You have to design respect for people into the system of the organization. And this is where social systems are so important. Let me just give you one example of Honda, from Honda, of respect for people. I was, I was there one day, and a young, well, young woman, middle-aged woman named Sandy, I won't tell you her last name, um, she was a, a public relations person, and she was touring me around the four different plants. And she told me about when she first came to work at Honda, and it's an important story, because this is true for every professional person, engineer, manager, etc. Being a experienced professional public relations person, I am sure that the first day she showed up for work, she looked good. I'm sure she had a nice dress on and had her makeup done and her hair done and earrings and I don't know, whatever, but I'm sure she looked good. And when she arrived, she was handed her uniform and her baseball cap. It said Sandy over here and Honda over here. And she was assigned to welding on the assembly line. Welding. I asked her how she felt about that. She said, frankly, it scared the hell out of me. And I said, looking back, you know, it was two years after now, I said, you know, looking back, how do you feel about it now? And she said, it was absolutely the best thing. And I said, why? She said, because I learned respect. I learned respect for the world's greatest experts who are on the spot, have their hands on, doing the real value added work of the organization. And every manager learns respect, learns to respect it by doing the work. You know, you'll respect the farmer when you go out and hoe a row. You'll respect the farmer. <laughs> but, but just saying you respect is not the same thing. You gotta feel it. And you'll feel it when you are in the trenches 
doing it. So that's a universal truth at Honda. When I was there, Mr. Iri Majiri was the president, and then Mr. Yoshino was the president. And every day, and I mean every day, they spent about an hour out on the floor doing what Toyota calls the Gemba Walk, or Honda just talks about being on the spot. Why? To correct people? To make sure people are doing the right thing? No. To learn. To learn about the problems the associates are having. To learn about problems in the process. To learn about what experiments have been conducted and what the employees have learned. And to encourage them. That's why you do a Gemba walk. That's why you're on the spot. Have we designed the jobs in our workplace to be intelligent rather than dumb jobs? I know it sounds simple. Do we cross-train people? Do we make people multitask? Do we give people decision-making responsibility? The whole idea of the end on cord, you may know, at Toyota, where any worker can pull the cord and stop the line, bringing 5, 000, the work of 5,000 people to a halt. Many plants, when they hear about that, they go, that's impossible. They can't really do it. Yeah, they do. They do it. And when that cord is pulled because a worker is stuck, can't solve a problem, I can guarantee you that engineers and supervisors or team leaders descend on that, boom, and they figure that out in seconds. They solve the problem, and then they talk about how we prevent that from happening again. But that is respect for people. Allowing workers to stop the line that employs so many people, that demonstrates respect. It's that decision process is a social system. It's designed into the organization. Is responsibility designed into your jobs? Do you provide the training that allows people to make decisions? Don't say they can't make them. Don't say they're not smart enough to make them. Are you smart enough to develop them? That's the question. In a lean organization, you don't make significant changes without consulting and talking to the people who have their hands on, who are at the Gemba or on the spot. I sat in decision-making meetings at Honda where they were trying to solve a problem, and a vice president said, well, maybe we should try this. And somebody else said, well, that, that's an interesting idea, but have you been on the spot? Meaning, have you talked to the workers who do the work? And that's sort of code language at Honda. If you haven't been on the spot, well, you know, it's sort of a nice theory, but you really don't know what you're talking about. Um, critical. Involve the workers who are on the spot in significant decisions in your organization. You will earn their respect because you will be demonstrating respect for them. Let's come back and talk about other principles.